The industry says it takes at least two to four hours to get the carpets dry. I'm gonna show you how to do it in 15 minutes. to make sure that my machine and equipment is functioning 100%. What do I mean by that? Well, I want to make sure that my throttle, I want to make sure the machine's tuned up, I want to make sure my belts are tight, I want to make sure that my filters are clean. It's very important to make sure your equipment's working properly, that way the carpet's dry properly. A thorough inspection is critical. I mean, you almost have to be a detective. You have to ask the customer questions. Mr. Jones, when's the last time you had the carpets clean? You know, because a lot of cleaners will leave detergent and stuff behind and you might have a problem. Or she might have spilled some fabric softener or there's some pet urine. She might have used some do-it-yourself over-the-counter products. If that's the case, you're going to need some defoamer. You're going to need some extra work and you might want to charge accordingly. But make sure you do a thorough inspection because that way you can address these problems to help get the carpet as fast and dry as possible. Pre-vacuuming. Why is pre-vacuuming so important? It's because, remember, 70% of the soil inside of carpets is dry particulate matter. So you want to take and pull as much of that dry soil out as you possibly can. Why? Because one reason is you don't want it to turn to mud. Remember, mud is very hard to get out of the carpet. Number two is when you go to pre-spray the carpets, if you have that dry particulate matter in the way, your pre-spray can't get down into the fiber and it won't suspend the soil. Remember, cleaner carpets dry faster, so make sure you pre-vacuum really well. Hose management is very important because if you don't manage your hoses properly, you're going to have longer drying times, you're going to have possible wicking, and you have upset customers. So you want to get the carpets dry as possible, definitely take care of hose management. And what do I mean by that? Number one is you want to make sure there's no S-bends and stuff in it. What does that do? If you have a bunch of S-bends in it, it's not laid out flat and straight, you're going to have all this restriction and that lowers your lift. Number two is if you're working upstairs and you want to use a cheater or a leader hose, whatever you want to call it, or a whip hose, that's fine because it's not a soil. But when you get downstairs, make sure you go ahead and shorten it, take that off in there and run two inch straight if you have that availability for a truck mount especially. Also, as you're moving downstairs, take and shorten the hose as much as possible to the truck. That increases your vacuum and decreases your dry times. You know, people ask me, Rob, how many clean strokes should I do? get the carpets clean. I always say as many as it takes to get it clean, right? Just want the carpets clean as possible because clean carpets dry faster. Think about a dog. If you wash a dog and you still got some oil and dirt on him, it takes a long time for him to dry, right? But if you wash him really good, maybe wash him twice, what happens? He comes a lot cleaner and he dries a lot faster and he doesn't smell either. So that way you don't have any redos. So do as many clean strokes as it takes to get the carpets clean. Okay, what about dry strokes? Well, it's similar to clean strokes, but just remember this. The rule in the industry is one clean, two dry strokes. So two dry strokes to every clean stroke. So think about how many clean strokes you do and double up on it for the dry strokes. Also, if you have a good wand like we have here, a swivel wand with a viewfinder in there, you can see the amount of detergent and the moisture coming out of there. So you make sure you got it as clean and dry as possible. <laughs> it's really important to get the air moving, all right? Let me show you the ways to do it. Number one is if they have ceiling fans, cut those ceiling fans on them as soon as you leave the room. Don't cut it on ahead of time because your pre-spray might dry. Fans are really important. I don't care what fans you carry, just make sure you carry some fans. I carry two small fans on my truck, usually one for upstairs and one for downstairs. Another cool trick is you can set it at the bottom of the stairs and let it cool you while you're cleaning the stairs. That's pretty cool. It's also helping it to dry on top of it. Just make sure it doesn't dry your pre-spray. On top of it, I like these here because you can daisy chain them. You can hook more than one to it if you want to. It has three speeds. And here's a cool little tip. We like to take an unchained air freshener sticking in there. It makes the whole house smell fresh too. Hey, you also want to make sure that you have the air conditioning or the heating working properly. Remember, in the wintertime, you want the heater on, and in the summertime, you want the air conditioner on. Look, Mom, no cords. How cool is that? This is the new lithium-ion Orbot machine, and it basically only weighs about 48, 49 pounds. Very easy to maneuver inside a home, and post-bonding is so important. Why do I say that? Because it helps with the drying. It even helps with the cleaning process, because sometimes you might leave a little bit of soil behind. You might leave some moisture behind. If you can get that extra soil and moisture out of there, it's going to dry faster and stay cleaner longer. So that's really cool about this machine. On top of it, you can add some product in here. If you want to touch up a spot, you can touch up maybe a pivot point or a little area that might be coming in and out of a kitchen or maybe a high traffic zone, you can really knock it out easy with this. So post bonding makes a huge difference because remember this, wet goes to dry, dirty goes to clean. So if you've got a good super zor pad like so in here, you can really get through this place right here and get it dry easily within 15 minutes. Okay, the final step is you can rake. No, you can groom the carpets. Try not to use that language inside of a customer's home. We like to say post 
groomed. And what does that do? It's kind of like after you wash your hair, you kind of brush it into position. It'll actually dry better and it'll dry in a better position. Now, not everybody does this. A lot of guys leave the backgammon look and that's cool. I've done it myself, my customers are used to it. You can also leave the backgammon look with the carpet brush. So think about that, that's pretty cool. On top of it, you can also take when you're doing it, you can work in all your deodorizers and all your protectors and get them spread nice and even. Chemistry is very important. Why is that? Because if you don't have the right chemistry, especially with newer style carpets like polyesters, olefins, and polypropylenes, remember nylons are easy to clean, but those newer style carpets are harder to clean, so you need some good products that are really cut through it when it comes to urine, spotting, and pre-sprays, all that. You need good products that make a huge difference. I'm talking about premium products to break and suspend that soil, so that way you can go ahead and get it out of there and the carpets will get cleaner and they'll get dry faster. That's really important. On top of it, it's kind of cool to have yourself a mix guide like I have right here. Uh, you pick up one of these mix guides right here and it definitely explains exactly how to use all the different chemicals. It also has some secret recipes and also the cleaning steps, that's important. Last but not least, we are a small batch manufacturer. So being a small batch manufacturer, we can go ahead and use the finest and the safest products that are made out there. We take no shortcuts. I buy the absolute best of everything. And you can use a selling point with customers. You can show them on the back of the label. No NTAs, no butyls, no fillers, free rinsing, no sticky residue, 99% uh, green, environmentally free, softens the fibers. That type of information goes a long way. It makes a big impact on the customer psyche. Keeps them coming back so you get the reviews, the repeats, and the referrals. Self-esteem. You're probably wondering, well, how does self-esteem tie into drying carpets fast? Well, it really does. Why do I say that? Because you can have the biggest, baddest truck mount on the planet with all the power that you can have, but if you don't take the time and do a really good job, you're going to get poor results. Sloppy work, sloppy results. So take the time, take some pride in your workmanship. That way the clients will come back to you, you'll get the carpets dry fast, and you'll be successful.